on display. Well, Rowdy, you can help me celebrate. 150 years. You look good. You look good for 150. I think I look a little spry for my age. Yes, you do. Of course, I'm at certain ages just to stay to mind. Yes, if you don't mind, it doesn't matter. No, that's right. Take a look at this beauty over here. This is the 1903 Model A. No. It's the oldest surviving car of the of my company. Oh, really? And let me tell you a little bit about it. 110 years ago, most automakers were focusing on building fancy cars for rich folks. I had another idea. idea. As I put it, I will make a motor car for the great multitude, constructed of the best materials, using the best workers, after the best, after the simplest designs that modern engineering can devise. So low in price that uh, no man making a good wage will be unable to own one. And uh, anyway. Uh, uh, this uh, Model A, like all early Model A's, had an eight horsepower, two-cylinder engine, which could get it up to about 30 miles per hour on a smooth road, if you could find a smooth road. Mm -hmm. All right. Anyway, uh, let me take you over in this direction here, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about... All early automobiles were built, basically, by teams of workers, heading this way. And... Uh, with each worker building a single component of some assembly by hand. It wasn't until 1913 that we got the idea of using a moving assembly line. Increasing efficiency and lowering production costs by bringing the cars to the workers. As I've always said, no job is too big as long as you divide it into small jobs. So uh, soon we were able to cut the time it took to build a car from 12 hours to about an hour and a half, which allowed us to dramatically drop the price and make automobiles available to even more Americans. By 1914, with increased efficiency and sales volume, we were able to double the salary of the Ford workers. $2.34 for a nine-hour day to $5 for an eight-hour day. As far as I'm concerned, whoops, there is one rule for the industrialist. That is to make the best quality of goods possible at the lowest cost possible, paying the best wages possible. Now, come on this way with me. Sometime today we're going to have ear sets and a little microphone for us, but we don't have them yet. Anyway, my next big innovation in manufacturing was something the business school boys called vertical integration. That means as I set out to own, occupy, or own, um, operate, and coordinate all the resources needed to produce complete automobiles. To do this, we started the Rouge Complex. The modern marvel of manufacturing. By the late 20s, we were gathering resources like wood from Ford Forests and ore from Ford Mines, we're coming in from all over the world on our own fleet of ships and in our own railroad cars, and finally being turned into completed automobiles that rolled off our assembly line every 49 seconds. Today, at the Rouge Complex in Dearborn, we're turning out F-150 trucks like this one here. Under the direction of my great-grandson, Bill Ford, the new Rouge is a new type of modern manufacturing marvel. It is the world's best example of a green, sustainable production. Now let me show you uh, some more innovations of today's Ford Motor Company. We'll walk this way. I've always said that Thinking is the hardest job that a, a mortal can do. And being the hardest job, the higher rewards are reserved for it. I spent, one of the challenges I spent a lot of time thinking about was how to deliver uh, affordable green power to as many drivers as possible. For example, in 1932, I developed the famous Ford Flathead engine that brought V8 power to millions. 
fact, even the infamous bank robbers, Bonnie and Clyde, always drove a V8 Ford whenever they could get away with one. Anyway, uh, for example, my 1903 original Model A had a 1.6 liter engine. It could uh, produce 8 horsepower. This all new 2013 Fusion is powered by a 1.6 liter EcoBoost engine that produces 178 horsepower. It can get 37 miles per gallon on the highway. It can go a lot faster than 30 miles an hour. Uh, now, Ford innovators have once again uh, brought green, affordable power to millions of people mover. That's what that is. Um, anyway, they, they brought green, affordable power to millions by using EcoBoost technology. Uh, but uh, green energy doesn't stop with EcoBoost. Uh, from over here, Ford also offers a full range of electrified vehicles. Five different models using three different types of powertrains. You know, I've always been fascinated by the possibilities of electric power. In fact, I was the chief engineer at the Edison Illuminating Company right here in Detroit. And in 1913, Thomas Edison and I built our own electric car together. Now, I even built a hydroelectric plant at my home in Dearborn. And using the power of the Rouge River, supplied and supplied electricity to the entire Fairlane estate and other parts of Dearborn as well. Um, years ago, I predicted that we were entering an era where we would create resources that were so continuously sustainable that it would, the only loss would be not to use them. Next station over here, you see this big white column at the top? And, um, and our, one of our new things, one liter three-cylinder EcoBoost engine. Compact Dynamo is one of the world's best production engines. You know, I proved a lot of my greatest innovations on the racetrack from driving in my famous race with Alexander Winton, setting a world speed record on the frozen surface of Lake St. Clair. This innovative one liter eco boost engine has been proved the same way, powering both the Ford Focus to 16 world speed records at France's Surum test circuit, and the Formula Ford Racer, which recorded one of the fastest times ever at Germany's famed Nürburgring Nordschleife circuit. I had to work to pronounce that just right. Uh, this new technology of Ford's one liter EcoBoost engine has also received numerous industry awards. Uh, a technology born of the type of innovation that has helped Ford thrive for 110 years and will continue to drive its success. As I've always said, businesses that grow by development and improvement will never die. Now our last stop on the tour is over here at the Ford Fiesta. Try to maneuver around some of the blue Large group. 110 years after we sold our first three Model A's. It's all new. 2014 Ford Fiesta marks another key milestone the history of the Ford Motor Company. It's truly a global car, sold on six continents, offers outstanding safety, great capability, surprising technology, and fun driving dynamics for millions of drivers all over the world. So, I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about my life in the Ford Motor Company. If you'd like to learn more, 
Don't forget that Detroit is home to some wonderful historical sites that bear my legacy. Uh, the Henry Ford, which includes the museum and Greenfield Village, the Rouge Factory Tour, the Edsel and Eleanor House in Gross Point Shores, and of course Fairlane, a Dearborn home that my wife Clara and I built, which is, which is at the moment undergoing complete restoration. Anyway, I want to thank you for coming. And as I've always said, if we have come so far, so fast, are we likely to stop now? And in closing, go by Ford. <laughs>